Hi everyone, my name is Brandon, and at IROS 2022, I'll be presenting my work on the coupling of depth and ego motion networks for self-supervised structure for motion. Structure for motion is the process of jointly estimating scene structure and camera motion from a stream of images. Traditional methods extract features from the images and jointly estimate their 3D locations along with the camera poses using a nonlinear optimization algorithm called bundle adjustment. More recently, the structure from motion problem has been reformulated as an end-to-end -end learning problem, where neural networks parameterize a direct mapping from pixels to scene depth and camera motion. This learned SFM system consists of two separate networks, a depth network that outputs a per-pixel depth prediction for a target image, and an ego motion network that takes the same target image along with a nearby source image as input, and outputs the 6 degree of freedom pose change between frames. The system is trained end-to-end -end by minimizing a self-supervised loss based on image alignment. Here, the depth and ego motion predictions are used to warp pixels from the source image frame into the target frame in order to approximate the target image. The photometric reconstruction loss then compares this reconstructed image with the target image. The two networks in the system are jointly trained to minimize this self-supervised loss. Although depth and ego motion estimation are two highly related tasks, we note that most learned SFM systems employ independent network structures and are therefore decoupled from one another. The primary drawback with these approaches is that there is no explicit information flow between the two networks. Consequently, these two networks must implicitly learn how to produce predictions that are consistent with one another, such that the reconstruction loss is minimized. In particular, since the scale of the scene and the camera translation are both unobservable with a monocular camera, the networks must adopt a mutually consistent notion of scale. Producing scale-consistent networks is challenging, however, and the scale inconsistency that remains between the networks has been shown to negatively impact convergence at training time. We address this limitation by investigating how the depth and ego motion networks within the learned SFM system can be properly coupled to facilitate information sharing, both at training and test time. We develop what we call a tightly coupled network structure that employs two coupling strategies, namely feedback and indirect coupling. In the coming slides, we discuss our system and then demonstrate how our proper network coupling improves the overall system performance. The first form of coupling that we employ is called feedback coupling. This is applied to our ego motion network and is illustrated in this figure. Here, rather than producing the ego motion prediction via a single forward pass, our network iteratively updates the initial prediction through additional forward passes. In these subsequent forward passes through the network, the source image within the network input is replaced by the current reconstructed image. In doing so, the network is now able to produce a pose correction, seen as delta t, that further aligns this reconstructed image with the target image. This process is repeated for a number of iterations until the reconstructed image is optimally aligned with the target image. Here we visualize this process further. In the first pass, which uses the source and target image as input, the initial pose t0 is produced. Then, in subsequent passes, the source image is replaced with the reconstructed image and a series of corrections, delta t, are produced. With each correction, the reconstructed image becomes increasingly more aligned with the target image. After the final iteration, all of the predictions are compounded together to produce the final ego motion prediction between frames. On the right, we visualize the impact of iterative feedback by showing the reconstruction loss as a function of the yaw angle prediction. Initially, the first iteration prediction is far to the right of the minimum loss, but subsequent forward passes through the ego motion network produce corrections that accurately converge this prediction to align with the minimum of the loss. The second form of coupling we employ is called indirect coupling. This form of coupling uses a test time optimization scheme to further reduce the self-supervised reconstruction loss on individual samples at test time. We call this indirect coupling because the depth and ego motion networks are implicitly linked via the gradient flow from the loss function during optimization. Our test time optimization scheme refines the weights within the depth network, causing the depth predictions to change in such a way that further reduces the reconstruction loss. We visualize this optimization in the figures below. Here, the initial prediction is compared with the optimized prediction after 20 gradient descent steps. We can see that the overall depth accuracy improves throughout the image. As a result, the per-pixel reconstruction loss is reduced. Next, we briefly discuss some key results from our paper. The left figure illustrates the accuracy of the ego motion predictions for sequence 10 of the Kitty dataset. As we can see, the trajectory produced from a baseline system, shown in blue, 
drifts significantly over time. By introducing feedback coupling through iteration and then introducing indirect coupling through test time optimization, the accuracy substantially improves. Notably, when comparing our method with other similar learning-based approaches, we achieve state-of-the-art accuracy on the standard evaluation benchmarks. Next, we conducted a frame skip experiment to demonstrate how our proposed system improves generalization. Here, we evaluated the eagle motion accuracy on the test sequences with frames removed in order to simulate larger motion between camera frames. This new high velocity data is considered to be out of distribution since the modified sequences were not a part of the original training set. The results of this experiment are shown on the right. As more frames in the sequence are removed, the visual odometry error produced from the baseline one iteration model shown in blue significantly increases. Conversely, by applying more iterations, our network is able to maintain its accuracy within these high velocity sequences. Lastly, we conducted an experiment to show how our system can pass scale information between the networks. To do so, we modified the scale factor of the depth predictions within a test sequence, and then used these predictions within our feedback coupling scheme to iteratively produce the ego motion predictions. Notably, we see that there is a linear relationship between the scale of the translation norm and the scale factor applied to the depth predictions. This indicates that our coupling scheme allows a common scale factor to be shared between the networks. Thanks a lot for listening. To hear more about this work, please feel free to read our paper, which is available as a publication in the Robotics and Automation Letters.